There are 23 ways to make money on the podcast, and it is what I get asked the most. Mm. Forbes magazine asked me to write down 23. I have not written out 23 ways to monetize the podcast. Think of it as a game. All money is is a game. Well, podcasting is exactly the same. It's a doubles game. If you play it by yourself, you can get a certain distance. But by bringing other people in, you double what you can do. That's step one. Now, let's think literally the most obvious way to begin making money from the podcast. Client acquisition, exactly what Caleb said. I have a product or service, um, maybe I have a gorgeous thing you like ministry, and I think if only I could get in front of AXA Insurance, I know they do a massive Christmas party once a year, I know they spend 75,000 pounds, which is a worksite at about 195 pounds per person, and if I get that in, I'm closer to my bonus. Okay, who cares if no one listens to my podcast? If I can get in front of them for 35 minutes, I have an opportunity to make money, number one. Number two, now you're talking to AXA and you're like, cool, I've got that going. The next episode, you're thinking, oh, I don't even know where to start. You think, well, hold on a second, who would like to, who's like AXA? Let me find another insurance company, tell them that I just had access, so they're super excited, and go, guess what, actually, that one's normally 550 to be on my episode, but I'm gonna charge you 250 quid. It's 10 episodes in a season, 250 quid, it's 2,500 pounds. Okay, cool, now I've got my first monetization. Well, now there's advertising, because I'm hopefully gonna be on something like Buzzsprout, which is free. And Buzzsprout works like YouTube. It'll go out and find you an advertiser if it thinks that your podcast has a listenership larger than 10 minutes, less than 25 minutes, preferably an American audience. Great, now Buzzsprout goes and finds you a bunch of advertisers and sticks it on your dashboard, and you go, yes, 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 no, 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 no. Great, now Buzzsprout is paying for your hosting for the rest of the two years that you want a podcast. Excellent. Now you go to Podcorn. Podcorn says, I'm happy to find you a sponsor. And you go, awesome. What kind of companies do I want to work with? These. And while you're reading through these, these sponsor opportunities, you're going, no one knows my business like I know my business. I'm, a, I'm ministry. I have this incredible venue. I'm getting in front of these front of people. I need to go and speak to my suppliers about being in front of AXA insurance, etc. So let me go ask them if they'd like to advertise. Great, now I've got an advertise. I've got three opportunities to advertise on a podcast. Pre-roll, mid-roll, post-roll. Mid-roll is the most expensive. Okay, maybe I'll start that at a nice, cheap 500 pounds. Then I go 750, then I go 250, because people normally skip the final end. Great, 10 episodes again, do your maths, five and a half, seven and a half, two and a half. Suddenly you're up to 10 grand. Now we move to the next thing. Well, I can, you can hear me speak on a podcast. I speak clearly, and I don't say many ums, ahs, ands, or buts. So that's pretty good. Well, why don't I reach out my podcast to a bunch of speaker bureaus and say, hey, by the way, I'm available for speaking. And if you've heard my podcast, you know what kind of an expert I am. Now you have a speaking opportunity. Boom, you've now found four ways to monetize a podcast. Now people are listening to your show, they're really interested in the subject you're doing, you've proven that you're an expert in your subject, so they want to find out more, and you say, hey, would you be interested if I wrote a book? If you put five quid into my PayPal account, I'll go out and write a book. Suddenly there's 1,000 of them paying five pounds, and you're like, that's worth writing a book. I don't even need to do the maths on that, because what I can do is take the transcript from the show, stick it into a transcription service, yeah. turn that into a book, and sell that book straight back to my audience. Great, let's find another one. I did a book, I speak for a living because I do a podcast, why don't I do an audio book? Do the same thing, charge half the price, Resend it to those people who bought the book and say, hey, would you like the audio version? You now have a book and an audio book, you stick it on Audible, you stick it on Amazon and KDP Publishing, you've got another way of monetizing your podcast. You then go through all these things, you're probably on about seven or eight ways to podcast that will make money for your podcast, and you suddenly realize that your book can be turned into a course, and a course is a really easy way to make money because you can guarantee you start in the middle and end. People love that, there's already Skillshare in Kajabi. You reach out to them, you scale a course. Why are you talking to Kajabi and Skillshare? You say, by the way, aren't you two of the biggest podcast advertisers on the planet? They go, yes we are, you go, fantastic. Guess what, I have a podcast. That's how I started a book, that's how I got a course, that's how I became a speaker. They go, oh my God, I'd love to get your course. You go, how about we do a deal, 50-50, you sell it to your audience, 50%, they go, fine, now you've got a course. Now when people are buying a course, you send an email and you say, would you like to do a and, awesome. and, that, and, that, and you just keep scaling, and it becomes a game, it gets exciting, how else can I make money out of this? I have franchised my podcast, I have licensed my podcast, I have someone paying me right now to be the host of my podcast for two shows. That's 550 euros, and you get to be on my show and sell your wares, and I'll give you all the content that's made for my show to use in your social media. That's cheaper than a social media manager for a month. And they were like, done.